you can use type to catch people's attention. I'll show you how in this lesson. Let's say we've got our body text in a good place. It's easy to read. What we need now is for people to want to read it, to know it's there. We need to call out to them visually with something really interesting, display text. Typography doing this job is on display. Its job is to look interesting. It's even more important than it being legible. Text doing this job needs to convey the feeling you want it to, like a gut feeling. So choosing a font for display use and hitting just the right note can seem open-ended and a little overwhelming, but generally, you know what you want when you see it, or at least you know what you don't want, so that helps. Plus, lots of fonts work well for display use. You have a lot of freedom, and you really can't go wrong. And the exercise we're about to do helps any font you pick look good with your body text. It may not look great, but we'll talk about how to get there. So spend as much time as you want looking around for different options. Type in your own text. Use the real characters you'll be using in your project. We'll be using the word range for our exercise, so that's what I typed in. And bring any interesting fonts into your design tool so you can look at them more closely. Try to decide which of them is most compatible with your body text font. One thing you can do here is look at them close up. Look for similar shapes. Basically, do these fonts have shapes that remind you of one another? Pay attention to stems, the upright part of letters. Are they slanted or straight? Do curved shapes follow a similar arc? What about angles? Do you notice a similar sharpness? Pay special attention to the places where shapes seem to join. Do the fonts share a similar approach? Next, you want to look at these fonts the way they'll be used. In this exercise, we're going to take the fonts we found one at a time and put them with the body text. We're going to leave the body text alone and only adjust the display text. It's the same kind of adjustments that we made to the paragraph of body text, but this time we're going to look very carefully at shapes and spaces in more of an abstract way. What we're looking for is harmony in positive and negative shapes. So here, I'm starting to adjust the font size of this display text. As you do this, pay attention to the thick and thin parts of glyphs. Glyphs are the letters, numbers, and symbols that we see. They represent characters. So you type a lowercase a, and the font's lowercase a glyph makes that character look a certain way. As we reduce font size, the very thin parts of the glyphs in the display text. Like pay attention to the, the serif at the top left of the F, or the serifs on the lowercase w. Right, those are about as thick, when I reduce the size a bit, those are about as thick as the stems of the body text. And as this gets bigger, the heavy parts of glyphs are about as thick as my body text's X height is tall. Compare the, the thickness of the lowercase L in flexible. That stem is about as thick as the body text X height is tall. X height is the measurement from a font's baseline to the height of lowercase letters that don't extend up or down. We're not only looking at the black parts of these letters either. We're also paying attention to volumes of white space. White space isn't necessarily white, but it's the negative space in and around glyphs. Type designer Cyrus Highsmith wrote an excellent book called Inside Paragraphs, where he talks about the black and white parts of letters, like parts of a puzzle. Really good. So again, all I'm adjusting here is the font size of the display text. And as I do this, I'm paying attention to a variety of white space volumes, like the white space volumes inside glyphs called counter spaces, and the white space around glyphs, between them, the letter spaces, and also the word spaces between words. There are moments as I change the size here where the word space or the letter space or the counter spaces, they seem visually to have volumes that are similar to white space volumes in the body text. So let me show you some of what I'm talking about here. 
If I reduce this quite a bit down like this, I would say that just about here, the word space feels like a similar volume. The word space between flexible and workouts feels similar to the amount of line spacing in the body text. Or if I make this a little bit larger, right? Right about here, I would say that the letter spaces we're looking at in the display text, they feel about the same volume as the word spaces in the body text. And if I massage this a bit more, maybe bring it a little bit larger, like a little bit larger here, I'm seeing similar volumes of space in the counters of the display text, right? The, the small portion, the I of the lowercase e. I'm, I'm seeing that same kind of volume in some of the line spacing below in the body text. So a lot of those compatibilities. And all we're doing here is adjusting one property, the font size of the display text. But even though we're adjusting one property, we're looking at lots of these other things. We're trying to find positive and negative spaces that match up. That really helps us connect different pieces of typography to one another. No matter which fonts they're using, no matter what their other properties are like, we can find these ways of matching them up. You can try adjusting more than font size. You can try changing the thickness of the font by choosing a different weight if your font is part of a family that includes weights like semi-bold and bold and light, right? Just try playing with weight. Variable fonts with weight or width features are great for this. You can try using capital letters too and very softly adjusting letter spacing, making it a little bit more generous when you're using all caps. And you can vary the amount of space between your display text and your body text. And you can coordinate that white space volume with the other ones. In trying any of these adjustments, you're still watching for those positive and negative spaces. Do this exercise a few times. You can use one display font or try out a few different ones that you've found. Make your adjustments, try and find some balance, and then compare the results that you've come up with. Oh, and one more thing. You can use this technique at multiple levels to make even bigger text feel connected to the small stuff. You'll see that I've done that when we get to our next exercise.